So if you're a self-taught programmer and you are thinking about how to get into the industry, if you should be a freelancer or rather get a job, we will discuss that in this video. So in one of my other videos, I got a request if I can do a video about um, freelance versus getting a job. And this is what I'm going to talk about today. Um, I did many things in my life till now, even though I'm still quite young, but I've never felt so comfortable as in the position that I'm in right now with my professional work environment, let's say. And I want to talk about what I did to achieve that, to be now comfortable living day to day or working day to day. I hope I can help you with my experience because I've been a freelancer. I have worked in different jobs, so no tech IT jobs. And also I'm working currently as an employee. And at the end of this video, so make sure to stay tuned, I will also talk about what I am working towards, a thing that I call the holy grail of this IT industry. So first I want to talk about the pros and cons of being an employee, then the pros and cons of being a freelancer, then as I said, my holy grail kind of thing, um, and then we sum it up in what I think you should do when you're at that point that you're now getting into applying for jobs or thinking about freelancing and whatnot. So the start, let's start with the employment or as being an employee pros. One of the best things is, of course, you can just do your job. You don't have to worry about any other thing. You're employed for one thing. And if you do that, th uh, things will turn out good. Everybody's going to be happy. Another thing is that as an employee, you might, especially in this kind of industry, you uh, are able to get good benefits. So if you're, I don't know, a front-end, back-end developer or something like that, if you're an employee in, uh, even if it's a startup or a, a, even a bigger company, there are things uh, that are included there. One of the things that are included in my company, for example, is that with our company, the, yeah, the whole company goes on a vacation once a year. So that's one thing that we do. Then another thing is, depends if this is a pro or con for you, that you are in an office, you have colleagues. You will find out if you're a freelancer, you never get this intimate connection to a client. The client is always on a different kind of level than you are. Of course, if you have a very good client, it can be a, a great partnership, but you don't have this employee, like this colleague kind of uh, relationship with other people. Then the cons, of course, are that you have a boss with all the good and bad things that comes with it. Usually we see it more negatively. So if you want to have uh, go on vacation, you have to ask your boss or your manager. Um, they, they will give you kind of things to, to achieve. You will have to, you're under pressure with the goals. Maybe that goals don't make a lot of sense, which brings me to the next point is kind of the bullshit that you will have as an employee. Uh, in my example, uh, some kind of bullshit task that I have in my current job now is that I have to fill out a daily form in the morning where I say what my now uh, goals are for today, for today, if I don't have any emails in my inbox uh, that are not answered and stuff. And for me, I just don't work that way. I'm quite organized with those things. So I don't have to have a form reminding me. So I just fill it out. And for me, it's uh, what I would deem a waste of time. But these are just the bullshit things that sometimes you have to do as an employee, which if you are self-employed you or a freelancer, you can pretty much do whatever you want. You don't have this BS type of stuff, uh, which, yeah, if you work in a company, you just might have with HR, with your manager. That just comes with the territory. And then the other thing is, of course, the salary. So as an employee, your salary is kind of capped. So as an example, if you have a salary of $60,000 per year, I think that's kind of a median for an unexperienced developer, you will get a salary of around $5,000 a month. If you compare that to uh, something you could do, let's say if you uh, work as a freelancer for $50 an hour, if you're fully booked in your freelancing job, that yields a monthly, let's call it salary of $9,600. So it's almost double. So if you have a median kind of good salary as an employee, we could say that you make half as if you would uh, be a freelancer. Of course, if you uh, are fully booked as a freelancer. So there is always kind of the cap you have as an employee with how big your salary can get. So let's talk about the pros of being a freelancer. Of course, you don't have a boss. You're your own boss. You can do pretty much whatever you want. Of course, this is sometimes a little bit portrayed more or it's a little bit more glorified than what the actual reality is. 
because when I worked as a freelancer, you have always this accountability to your client, which is, in my experience, a lot of times actually higher than if you this accountability that you have towards your um, your your manager or your boss as an employee. So we get this idea that if you're a freelancer, you kind of go to Bali, you work uh, half days on the beach, laying in the sand or something like that. That sometimes we, we have that in mind as being a freelancer. But the reality usually looks way different where you're actually more accountable to stuff you have to do um, uh, towards your clients than if you would be an employee to your boss. But let's put that still in the pros. Technically, you don't have uh, you have more uh, freedom because you don't have a boss. Then the other thing, the flexibility. So um, let's say you want to go on vacation, you want to work from anywhere. If you're self-employed, if you're a free freelancer, you can do that. It's just important that you get stuff done. How you make that happen is up to you. As we said before with the salary, uh, as a freelancer, there is no kind of ceiling to what you are able to get. Of course, if you're an employee, you can get, especially in tech, very high earning salaries. But it's way easier to get more uh, uh, higher income, let's say, as a freelancer, because you can easily just get a better uh, hourly rate. Whereas if you're an employee, your uh, salary, at least for one year, is pretty much fixed. And then what you can get without uh, jumping the, the job, the current job you have, is not that high as if you get a new client as a freelancer. And last time for your old client, you charge $60 an hour. You can now charge $75 an hour, which is substantially more. It's way easier to do as if uh, you would be an employee. Then one other cons of being a freelancer. So again, you have no ceiling of income, but you also don't have any bottom of income. So it could be that you're not able to charge $60 an hour, but just $25 or $15 or $5 an hour. Uh, I actually worked for, uh, uh, I think, as a front-end developer for $8 uh, an hour. So this is possible. This can happen to you as well. So there is no bottom of your income that you could have. Other thing is a higher risk. For example, um, if you're just an employee, you just get your money, you do whatever you want. Uh, you're in this kind of um, bubble where you cannot really do anything that that you personally would carry a, a big risk unless you're in, in a manager position or something like that. But if you're just an employee, there's no real risk invo uh, involved. But if you're uh, a freelancer, you have to... Uh, think ahead like if I uh, break something what are the consequences do we have to uh, fix that before I start the job and, and things like that or in in my uh, experience one one story I want to share here is for one of the freelance jobs or, or things I did I had to set up uh, as um, a payment on my website and what happened is that payment was actually abused so we could say hacked uh, so it was uh, connected to Stripe. Stripe is something like PayPal. And I was scammed $20,000. The weird thing was I had $20,000 more on my account than before. So they didn't take away money. I actually got more money. But figuring that out with the payment provider Stripe and giving the, the, the rightful owners of this money, the, uh, of this money, the money pack, uh, was quite a hassle and I had some uh, sleepless nights about because of that because it could have cost me um, uh, around a hundred thousand dollars if I wouldn't have fixed it right away and you just have a way higher risks and these things can happen that uh, one day from one day to the other you maybe are confronted with an issue that could cost you a hundred thousand dollars whereas if you're an employee these things just don't happen. Then another thing comes, so with uh, as an employee, I said you have more uh, bullshit on your hands, but actually as a freelancer, kind of it's the same thing. So as an as a employee, you just do your job and then at the end of the day, you go back home and, and that's it. But as a freelancer, you have to uh, focus also on not just the things you do as a freelancer. So let's say you're a front-end developer, you build kind of a React app or something like that. No, you also have to think about your accounting. So what uh, if your client has a foreign currency? How do you handle that? How do you handle that in your country with your accounting? Then another thing, uh, marketing. So you have to set up a website. So as an employee, you don't have to set up your own website as being an employee. But as a freelancer, you have to set up your own website. You have to go through how do I communicate what I'm doing? What, uh, how should I do market that? Do, do I do, no, I don't know, uh, Facebook ads, Google ads, something like that. 
you have to think about those aspects as well if you're a freelancer which as an employee you just you couldn't care less about um, and then the last thing and one of the biggest things is of course getting clients so maybe you've already networked maybe you've already know people you could work from uh, for that's of course the best um, the best way to start a freelancing career but many of us don't have that so you might have to hustle on upwork till you get uh, a, a lot of good reviews or you have to go into your your contacts that you have maybe friends and family and figure out with them run around try to find finding uh, clients as an employee you just do that once while getting your actual job and then you're done uh, hustling and and getting jobs um, or, or work so you you just have work because you're employed so these are surely the biggest cons for being a freelancer so now to the special tip that i had in the beginning which i think is the holy grail of uh, of uh, working in it in this tech world especially kind of this uh, uh, web development stuff but also um, applies to to other niche niches of this it world is consulting so if you're able to specialize yourself in something like i don't know uh, app development or uh, something like react uh, development for uh, medicine industry or something like that if you're able to be one of those authorities in your space that there you are a specialist you're able to get um, consulting gigs and this is the best thing ever because the consulting uh, hourly rate is usually way higher than if you're just a normal let's say developer no matter if it's front or back or whatever the consulting is usually way higher it's less stress uh, uh, revolved because the only thing you actually work on is giving uh, away knowledge so many of the consultants don't even work on code they te teach or tell other people analyze uh, code bases what they could do better and then they're out of it so um, this is something i'm working on uh, at the moment to uh, get to this space this will probably take a couple of years till I'm there. I didn't really uh, identify, for example, my niche, which I'm passionate about in this IT space. So I am now working as an employee, but slowly but surely developing a specific niche, a specific authority in that niche. So I'm able to become a consultant in the future and maybe work part time as an employee for one uh, company, but then part time as a consultant in uh, for for that kind of niche that I found myself. So, of course, bringing that all together, what should you do when you are now um, comfortable with your skills that you have as maybe a front end engineer or a back end engineer, maybe Angular, React, Node.js, PHP, Python, whatever you have or whatever your skills are? Um, I would see it like that. For me personally, I think, especially in the beginning, uh, trying to be an employee is usually the be best thing. Because freelance, uh, as I said, it gets glorified a lot. I think uh, for most people, it's not the right thing. You have to uh, be aware that you will get, you have to give up a lot of things. There are a lot of compromises you have to do if you're a freelancer because you're gonna be self-employed. That means you have to figure out how does accounting work? How does marketing work? You have to hustle, you have to get clients. Something will not work out. You will have sleepless nights if you are a freelancer. Uh, whereas if you're an employee, you have other things to think about. You are getting into a job. You have maybe worked uh, the first time in a real job uh, in IT. So I would suggest uh, trying to, to break into this industry as an employee, learn from the others, have this colleague kind of relationship with your colleagues, learn from them and maybe then develop the idea of, no, I want to be an entrepreneur. I want to figure out my own things. I don't like working for a job. Then I think I would uh, start thinking about freelance. So uh, I think that is pretty much it uh, from my side. Uh, if you have experience as a freelancer or as an employee, if you're happy or unhappy with that, I would love to hear uh, from, from you about your experience. So please post it in the comments down below. And don't forget, if you like this video, I also always appreciate a like. If you want to see more videos like that, don't forget to subscribe. See you in the next video.